Patellofemoral syndrome, also known as runner's knee, is a common overuse disorder of the knee joint. Patellofemoral syndrome is specifically diagnosed when there is no other attributed pathology, such as a meniscal tear, tendonitis, or bursitis. It typically presents as anterior knee pain behind the patella and is aggravated by activities that involve loading the patellofemoral joint such as during running or jumping, and that is why patellofemoral syndrome is also known as runner's knee. Let's talk about some of the anatomy. The knee joint is made up of the lower end of the femur, upper end of the tibia, and the patella. The articular cartilage covers and protects the ends of the bones, where they meet to form the joint. Within the joint themselves, there is another cartilage, the meniscus, which helps cushion the joints. The knee joint is filled with a clear fluid, the synovial fluid, that acts as a lubricant to reduce friction within the joint. There are also small fluid-filled sacs called bursa, which cushions the joint and help reduce friction between the muscles and the other surrounding structures. The patella is a bone. It is the largest sesamoid bone in the human body. It is located anterior to the knee joint, within the tendon of the quadriceps muscles. It provides an attachment point for both the quadriceps tendon and the patella tendon, or also known as the patella ligament. The main function of the patella is to improve leverage for knee extension, so during straightening of the leg. The patella moves along what's called the trochlear groove during knee extension and flexion, moving up and down. The mechanism of patella femoral syndrome, there are a number of mechanisms, but the main one is an overuse injury where there is excessive loading of the patella femoral joint. Another mechanism for developing patella femoral syndrome is if you have lower limb malalignment. So if you have something called squinting patellae, where the patella is, sits medially, and if you have femoral antiversion, as well as hyperpronation of the foot. And this is an example of what it looks like when running. Another mechanism is something called patella maltracking, so abnormalities with tracking of the patella. Normally during knee flexion and knee extension, the patella travels within the trochlear groove and the inter- condylar notch of the femur. The movement of the patella is dependent on the muscles, the tendon, and the retinaculum that surrounds it. Any imbalance of these is most likely to cause the patella to track more laterally. So during episodes of loading, patellofemoral syndrome or symptoms may arise as a result. The causes of patella tracking or maltracking are usually a result of weakness or tightness of muscle groups. So this includes tightness of the vastus lateralis, rectus femoris, the hamstring muscles, or the iliotibial band. Alternatively, it could be due to weakness of the vastus medialis, allowing the patella to track more laterally. Another mechanism of patellofemoral syndrome is due to issues with the Q angle. So the Q angle refers to the angle at the junction between two lines drawn from the anterior superior iliac spine to the middle of the patella, and then another line drawn to the same point from the tibial tubercle or tibial tuberosity. Now, this normal angle is less than 20 degrees. A greater than normal angle is associated with patella maltracking, so moving laterally, for example. 
and females tend to have a greater Q angle than of men, which will also predispose them to having patellar maltracking and thus patellofemoral syndrome. The clinical presentation of patellofemoral syndrome is really patellofemoral pain, which is vague, aching pain over the anterior aspect of the knee. It is aggravated by activity, especially distance running, squatting, lunging, going up or down stairs, or sitting for long periods. And this is again in part due to the patella maltracking. The patient may describe a clicking or grating behind the patella on knee movement. The knee may give way due to pain and quadriceps inhibition. On clinical examination, there can be tenderness of the medial or lateral facets of the patella. There can be a small effusion, a bit of fluid within the knee joint, crepitus, and stiffness of patella movement, as well as wasting of the vastus medialis. It's important to exclude other diagnoses before diagnosing anyone with patellofemoral syndrome. Differentials for anterior knee pain to consider include ligamentous injuries, meniscal injuries, tendonitis of the patella or quadriceps tendon, bursitis, and iliotibial band syndrome. Treatment of patellofemoral syndrome primarily aims to attempt to correct any abnormal biomechanics. So the malalignment we've discussed that contributes to patellofemoral syndrome. So manual treatment and stretching of tight muscles, for example, which may contribute to patella maltracking, and these include tight iliotibial band, hamstring, gastrocnemus, or the quadriceps, patella taping to correct any malposition or tilt of the patella to reduce the pain, strengthening the muscles for example, the gluteus medius or vastus medialis, orthotics to correct hyperpronation, which, if you remember, is a contributor to patellofemoral syndrome, modifications of training regime to avoid overuse injury. Surgery is typically not required. So, in summary, Patellofemoral syndrome is also known as runner's knee and is due to an overuse injury. There are many contributing factors, including malalignment, such as hyperpronation, as well as abnormalities in patella tracking. Treatment is generally conservative with strengthening exercises and stretching. Surgery is typically not required.